to everybody, but above all, I want to thank very, very warmly Katerina Frenzo, the moving spirit for in, of this event. Uh, I want to thank you, Katerina, for inviting me to say a few words about how Menoan Crete has inspired the works of many artists and craftsmen for well over a century, that is, since its rediscovery in 1900 until the present day, uh, thanks to the discoveries made by Sir Arthur Evans at Knossos, but also by many other archaeologists on many other Cretan sites. And in this, my, in my very first slide, um, you just you can see just I wanted to show you just a handful of examples of how one object, the famous snake goddess from Knossos, has inspired many famous artists such as Jean Cocteau or uh, Paul Klee. You can see the two pictures on on your left. Paul Klee's painting is one of my favorite. Uh, it is entitled "The Snake Goddess and Her Enemy." And of course, Harriet Quick has just mentioned also how this object inspired Sofia Coco Salat. But the snake goddess has inspired many other people, uh, has inspired satirical drawings, such as the um, one in the center, under, directly underneath the snake goddess, uh, uh, which has appeared on the Facebook pages only a couple of weeks ago of the group No Budget Epic. And of course, it has inspired the work of Cretan, other Cretan artists, like the one on the bottom right, a uh, painting by a Cretan painter from Heraklion, uh, Rusetto Spanagiotacis, uh, and perhaps my favorite, the uh, feminist communist pamphlet by the British author Elizabeth Lawton. I love that the double arts, the typical my, my non uh, uh, symbol, has also become part of the communist, my non communist symbol. This was published in the 1970s, I, I hasten to say. But in fact, the material culture of Minoan Crete for well over a century has inspired many, many different cultural practices. And I would like to stress at the global level, there are artists, writers, novelists on every continent that from the early 1900 until now have been inspired by the Minoan past. And in this slide, I have illustrated only some examples and I put them simply in alphabetical order, but I could have added many other uh, examples, modern ceramics, sculpture, video games, Japanese anime, but I stopped because I lacked space and I didn't want the writing to become too small. So, for example, in uh, architecture, uh, we have examples from Greece, uh, Dimitris Kyriakos or Nikos Zumbulidis, um, have produced neo minoan uh, um, buildings. We have examples from Balle and Dharma, from the uh, Balle Rus, Leon Bax, one of the uh, 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 members, the founding members of the Balle Rus, produced many costumes and sets inspired by minoan Crete, but also much more recent uh, um, ballads and choreographer, and I'm going to show you uh, some examples later. And, of course, in fashion. Uh, one of the earliest it was uh, Mariano Fortuny Madrazo, my friend uh, Ilaria Palò is going to speak about him. Um, but we have, again, Leon Bax, apart from working for the Ballet Russe, he also worked for a French uh, couturier and produced minor inspired clothes. And, of course, Karl Lagerfeld produced a collection inspired by the Minoan frescoes, well, frescoes from Akrotiri and Tira, uh, America Transu, and, of course, Sofia Coco Salak. We have films, and from early films in the 1920s, silent films that make allusions to uh, Minoan elements to recent Netflix productions. Uh, 
we have home furnishings and I'm going to show you some examples later. Music from operas by Richard Strauss to modernist operas by one of the famous living British composer, Harrison Bertwistle, but also rock like the San Francisco band uh, Giant Squid that produced a, an album in 2014 called The Minorms. And we have novels. We've heard earlier about Ma uh, Mary Reynolds, The King Must Die, and The Bulls from the Sea, but also Robert Graves, Krista Bolz, and of course, the Cretan writer Rhea Galanach. Poetry. Again, we have poems from Aldous Huxley, but I think it's one of the earliest poems inspired by uh, the, um, the snake. Uh, God, this was a poem by Aldous Huxley, more famous, of course, for Brave New World, but at the age of 17, he wrote uh, a poem about the snake goddess, or Cecil Day Lewis, or D. H. Lawrence. They all wrote poems inspired by Minoan Crete, and of course, Nikos Katsanzakis. Um, I'm thinking in particular uh, of his poetry, I'm thinking of his epic, uh, The uh, Odyssey, a modern Sigmund. And psychoanalysis, uh, Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud was an avid collector of antiquities. Uh, his best friend was an archaeologist, and he used Minoan archaeology in his controversial theory of inherited memory, and even gave a Minoan diagnosis to one of his patients, the poetess H.D. I told her that uh, her hysteria, her uh, bisexuality was uh, clear, clearly um, caused by the fact that she had a min minor memories emerging from her psyche uh, and uh, her passion for things minor was a symptom of her um, hysteria. We find Minoans in universal histories, like the famous Decline of the West of Oswald Spengler, and the not so famous uh, universal history by H.G. Wells. H.G. Wells, of course, is much more famous for the War of the Worlds and the Time Machine, but he also produced a universal history in the 1920s. And, of course, visual arts. Uh, I've shown you in uh, like in the works uh, I, I showed in my previous slides, uh, Paul Claire, Setos Panagetakis, Jean Cocteau, and many, many others. And obviously, in the time available, I can only show you a few more examples of the close engagement uh, with the art and imagery of um, Minoan Crete in modern cultural practices. And I'm going to focus on a few visual examples, so I'm not going to talk more about novels, poetry, no psychoanalysis, even if, of course, these provide fascinating uh, case studies. So, as I said in my previous slide, I showed uh, examples of visual art, and I'm going to focus in my next few slides on topics that I think will not be covered by other participants in this event. Um, so, uh, I'm going to speak a bit about neo minoan architecture, uh, about the Minoans on the stage, um, in the performing arts, and Minoans in your home. And I also want to stress that the people, um, artists, designers I chose, are people who truly engaged with the material culture, with the artistic language of Crete in the Bronze Age, Minoichi Crete, not with later Greek mythology about this beautiful island. So, let's start with Minoan architecture. Uh, two very well-known examples appear in this slide. One in your left is the 1930 building called the Iran in uh, Iraq, which is now opposite the Archaeological Museum, which was built by Dimitris Kiriakos. And this was, was supposed to be part of the celebrations of the uh, centenary of the Greek independence. Uh, but, oops, this is gone. 
Ah, it's back. <laughs> Dimitris Kiriakos didn't like perhaps what I was going to say. Well, I was going to say simply that it was built in 1930 and not, of course, in a 1922-23, the, these big celebrations were delayed because, of course, of the uh, Megali catastrophe. Um, and on the other, on the right, you see this example of a private residence uh, built by Nikos Zumbolidis in 1934. They all both make use of the typical tapering uh, minor columns. And I've chosen two examples from Greece, but there are also examples from Prague, Ljubljana, from uh, other uh, European cities. But my favorite, because it's the earliest, again, is an example from Crete. And it's the earliest example of neo minoan architecture I was able to find in my research. And it is the villa built by a Cretan Turk, uh, Ramizade Bahaitin Bey, uh, built in Heraklion in 1905. The villa unfortunately has disappeared, but we have photos and a sketch that you can see. Well, might be a bit difficult to see from people uh, at the back, but um, there are photographs taken by Bahetin Bey, because Bahetin Bey was a native of Istanbul, Istanbullu, but he migrated to Crete as a child and grew up in Crete and worked there for many years as a photographer. Um, before, again, political, the political situation forced him to return to Turkey. Now, from architecture, I want to move to the stage. And this slide shows, first of all, on your left, an illustration from an article in the Daily Mail of 1910, reporting on the London premiere of Richard Strauss's opera Electra. And as you can see from the slide, here, here, and here, some of the costumes were inspired by Menon and Crete, again from one, the one on the bottom from the uh, statuette of the famous statuette figurine of the snake goddess. And in the other slide, you see sketches for the costume of the 1947 ballet, The Minotaur, that was premiered in New York, said in 1947. And the choreography was by John Taras, the music by the modernist American composer Elliot Carter, and the minor looking costumes were by Juan Cunier, who was an artist from Catalonia. And again, to continue with um, neo-menoans on the stage, this slide shows more example uh, from operas. Uh, on the left, you can see Bert Whistle's outrageous and wonderful, gigantic snake priestess in the scene from his 2008 opera, The Minotaur, um, which was uh, premiered at Covent Garden. Uh, and on the right, you can see the much more, if you like, banal, the newer, more uh, copies, right, because of uh, typical minor architecture in the uh, 2011 production of Mozart Idomeneus uh, by San Jose Opera in California. And my final example is my nuance in your home. It's a textile of which I've brought also some uh, examples um, created by Josef Frank for Sveng Ten, which Sveng Ten uh, is a much earlier, much more refined and much more expensive predecessor of IKEA, IKEA, uh, which still operates in Sweden. So if you want to give your home a neo minoan look or neo minoan touch, you could head for Stockholm and, uh, uh, or 
more easily you can buy online a nail minoan sofa with matching curtains, cushions and footstools in part inspired by this very famous fresco from Knossos. The sofa, by the way, costs 7,700 pounds, and I don't think it includes the delivery and the assemblage. So, just to give you an idea. And here I also have, uh, it comes, uh, the textile comes in black and, uh, and, and white. And I bought this uh, about uh, less than a year ago in Stockholm. I didn't go there especially to buy this, I have to say. I was giving a lecture at the university, but I was walking down in Stockholm and I saw this in the, in the window shop and I, I just couldn't help it. And I got so confused between uh, euros, British pounds and kroners. I'm not going to tell you how much I paid for that, but it was 10 times what I was expecting to pay. Thank God for credit cards. And I would like to conclude, well, I want to thank once again the organizers of this event, but above all, I want to express my gratitude to all the artists, novelists, poets, musicians, fashion designers, psychoanalysts, and many others who have produced for well over a century, continue to produce, innovative works inspired by my known Crete. Their work, I want to thank them because their work helps to disseminate the Minoan past to wider audiences. And most importantly, they give the Minoan past a new vitality and a new relevance to the present. Oscar Wilde, as you can see on this slide, once wrote that archaeology is only really delightful when transfused into some form of art. Art and art only can make archaeology beautiful. Well, as an archaeologist, I don't fully agree with this. I think archaeology can be beautiful, sometimes even without art. But I want to thank Sofia Kokosalachi and all artists, fashion designers, novelists, musicians, poets, everybody who has who have made my known archaeology more beautiful for over a century. Thank you.